Hey, guess what? You just found Mind Pump. We're the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. All right, we got a giveaway for you today that you're going to love. Here's how you can win free access to MAPS HIT. Here's what you do. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Make it a good comment. If we like your comment and we pick it, we will send you free access to one of the best fat-burning programs you'll find anywhere, MAPS HIT. Pretty awesome, right? Look, turn on your notifications, subscribe to this channel so that you know when we post these videos so you can win some free stuff. Also, one more thing before we start the podcast, we are running a sale this month to help people get ready for summer. MAPS Anabolic is 50% off, and the Summer Shredded Bundle is 50% off. You can find both of them at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code April Special. All right, enjoy the podcast. Doug, can you pull up uh, the Hanson Brothers, H-A-N-S-O-N, from the movie Slapshot? I want to. Uh, I want to show. Uh, Aren't those guys talking are, about the band? Yeah, the band. Ooh. No, not not. <laughs> not, 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 not that Hanson. No. Oh, that's not who you're talking about. <laughs> no, dude. Who are you talking about? These guys look like Justin does right now. In fact, I feel like Justin could be in this lineup and be one of the brothers. What? Doug has to pull up the picture. What are they in? What are they in? It's a movie called Slapshot if, uh, oh. 1977. Oh. And uh, look at this right here. Tell wasn't me, that, tell me, a, watch a tell, romance flick. No, tell me, Justin. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I pull remember up. this now. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Pull up, maybe that. I just need a mullet. Pull I up guess. that middle one, or I don't know, one of those. Just enlarge that because it looks like Justin could totally fit. Not yeah. just because of the glasses and the. Yeah. Ma and the, mainly because they're like missing teeth and they're ble bleeding. Yeah. It looks yeah. like it looks like Justin would would totally fit in. They'd be like best buds. Oh yeah. We just we just did uh, we just fought someone. Yeah. Or we just did hockey. Bunch of tough. Is guys, that what you say? Huh? Did hockey? That's a I believe that's tell, like, uh, that's in the like the top top five all time hockey movies. Is it really? I believe so. I've never seen it. Is it good? Oh, you never seen it? I've never seen it. Yeah. I've only seen this picture, and then Justin right now reminded me of. That picture, Justin. You've seen why? Because the glasses. Yeah. The, or what? Well, I think it's the glasses and, like <laughs> you said, the the injuries. Um, oh yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. feel like you know, I can't believe well, you have a broken nose if you guys haven't you know been able to check that out. You've broken nose. Is yeah, that what's wrong times. with your face? No yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. This whole you know, time wrong, but that's that. one hold, thing. Hold on a second. Your what? nose is pretty damn good for being broken. Well, I told you. I I, I reset it myself. It's pretty nice for a fucked up face. No, no, no. No, you really appreciate that. Like an underhand compliment. Usually, when you break your nose, you have to smell things sideways. His looks good. No, you know what's crazy with that? I was at a Limp Biscuit concert of all things, mm. and uh, <laughs> I was on mushrooms. And <laughs> no, you weren't. Yeah, I was like, I was like walking around, and, and like everything was like way too heightened, and and I was bumping into everybody, and like you know. Next thing happens, like I'm I'm in a fight, and then I'm fighting some guy. And on somebody, mushrooms, yeah. And then somebody comes out of nowhere and just like just clocks like from the side, like to I didn't even see it coming, and my nose went all the way over to the side, and I just basically was just bleeding, and then I just I decided to do it myself and just pulled it real slowly over and adjusted oh. it in front of the mirror, and then finally I got it straight. So did you feel all the like the bone and everything? Yeah, I felt everything. It Are you painful. serious? Yeah. How many oh. broken bones have you had? Um, let's see. So I broke my right arm twice. Uh, uh, I sliced a bunch of things. I, I've had a few concussions. Uh, yeah, my, I almost sliced my big toe off. I stepped on this nail that basically it, my whole leg got infected from it because this like flesh eating bacteria got inside. And so I was in the hospital for 10 days, just draining that. Wow. So too yeah, much, I've had some fun. Too much flesh to eat for the bacteria. Yeah. So it, it gave up. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I killed it. Yeah. yeah. What, what about you, Adam? Have you broken any? No, no broken bones, no stitches. I've tore some ligaments though. Yeah, you you, <laughs> so you messed up your knee and that, your, that and all your came Achilles. later though, right? So that didn't happen until That's when uh, you got old. Yeah, my late twenties. Mm. So as a kid, I didn't have I didn't have any broken bones, no stitches, nothing like that. Yeah, I've never broken a bone, but I I separated my AC joint, stitches on the head, and then dislocated my knee. Cap what was the what, remind me what the shoulder thing was? I know that's why you don't ever bench press, but why yeah. did you? Why, what happened? You know, it actually was from jujitsu. I was uh, I posted back behind me and it pushed my shoulder forward, mm. and so the AC joint, right? That's where the the shoulder, the, the clavicle meets where the scapula is, mm -hmm. separated. Mm. And doctors like, well, you might be able to rehab it, but you got to have to stop jujitsu. You got to stop working out. You got to do blah blah blah. And I'm like, how fast if you did the surgery? That was. I was young, so I was dumb. Mm. So I had them resect it. So I don't have an AC joint. So going, side. if you were to do it again, you wouldn't have done the surgery. I would have tried. You know why? Because in fact, <laughs> I was having this conversation with my cousin because he dislocated his shoulder uh, a few weeks ago uh, snowboarding, mm. and he said that the doctor told him that his shoulder is going to be really easy to dislocate now because you know when it comes out of the the, the capsule or whatever, yeah. it starts to create kind of a path. And I said, look, I said I don't have an AC joint here. 
it's definitely not as stable as my right, but because I've built so much musculature around it and worked on the stability, it's not that huge of a difference. Right. So I said, you can you can probably do that, or at least you should try yeah, doing like that. that's like the only move, really, is to try and create stability through like building your muscles out and like mobility. That's uh, it. Makes it. Makes a huge difference. Yeah. And I would be more stable than someone who had uh, an AC joint without that support, yeah. is, my, is my point or whatever. How was everybody's Easter? Really good. Yeah. yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. I heard you actually saw the boring. Fin- the f- well, oh yeah, yeah no, it was just boring. <laughs> <laughs> was it really? Did you go to church? Did you go to church? Uh, uh, we didn't go this time. We did a virtual oh, thing. Going to hell. I mean, does that count? <laughs> yeah. Do the virtual ones count? No, I don't that's know. Not, does that count? You yeah. So, my, like, my dad just had knee surgery, and so he had a walker, and then my grandma, who's like ninety-seven, like had a walker, and so we tried to get them to race. You know, so that was kind of fun. That's a that's smart. But that was it. Hey, grandma, yeah. go as fast yeah. as you can in that walker. <laughs> Let's see I mean, what happens. That's as that's as much excitement as we had. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, I put the eggs out and stuff for the kids to hunt for them and all that. And so that was good. Now your kids are a little older. Do you put still candy or do you put money? Money. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. every egg or do you have a money egg? No, you do. Because we do a money egg, but we don't do every egg. Yeah, no. you do every egg, but it's just like coins. And then we do the, the big golden egg is like five bucks, you know? Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. So yeah. do the kids Score. get no candy or limited amount of candy? Like what's the what's the candy rolls with your other no, kids? No, they had, so they had candy at my house. Like, so we do our, our own little thing like beforehand. And, and Everett is like, he was convinced that he had to have Cadbury eggs of all things because like we hyped them up some mm-hmm. somehow. And I had to I had to run around and try and find Cadbury eggs. It's hard to find them. Like not really? every yeah, not every grocery store has them. What? Were they sold out or something? Yeah. Like I was mm. totally late to the party. But not uh right. I went to like six different stores and I was like driving yeah. around all night. You know, if you only them. eat the white in the Cadbury yeah. egg, it's got it's just Stupid. better for you. It's whatever. Really? Or whatever. No. no. I love Cadbury okay. eggs. One of my and I like peeps a lot. Uh my uh, Aurelius met some of my family for the first time. In person, oh awesome! Yeah, because of you know because of COVID and all that, he hadn't seen everybody, mm-hmm. so it was uh, it was an emotional time to mm-hmm. see everybody. You know, people start to get together again, and you could tell everybody missed each other so much. Oh yeah, and it was I just they're eating him up. Oh yeah, it was such a big deal. He loves attention too. He loves being around people. So it was it was it was a good it was good yeah. it was good for the soul. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. How about you, Adam? Yeah, I was. Uh, I did first Saturday. We did my family, so we drove up to my mom. My mom was all the way up in Sonora now. So it was a three-hour drive, uh, and she was upset we didn't spend the night because normally we would spend the night and then go to church the next morning with her. So we didn't do that. Um, We came back, drove back later that night, and then we did uh, Easter with Katrina's family yesterday. So it was good. It was nice. Uh, You know, what I was really happy, especially Katrina's family, um, because they go all out like with Easter, and, and just every kid has tons of baskets and candy and stuff. And uh, I was really proud. Like, everybody, like, uh, respected what I had said before about not giving him any candy. Oh, really? Yeah, no candy. So he just got a shit ton of toys. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So now I, get, like, I, I had three baskets full of, like, toys and trinkets. Uh, but no candy. Nobody tried to give him any candy. No one was giving him sweets. Nobody slipped him candy when you weren't looking? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I really I really appreciate that because it, it's, it was like the last six months has been a hard, a hard conversation around that because he's getting to that age where he's curious and he's looking at all that stuff, although he's not at the point where he can ask for it or really knows what mm-hmm. it is. But uh, and every and everybody is just so tempted. They want to be the one to give it to him and see the reaction. It's so mm. funny to me, right? They want to be the special one. Yeah. Katrina told me too, because you know, we talk about this all the time, just like with the different foods, like introducing to him. And she goes, uh, you know, the other day I, I let Max like taste a Dorito. And she goes, It was so crazy to watch his reaction. Like she gave him like just this little, like little taste of it just to see what he would do. And she goes, he literally, and this, he's not like this with food. Like if he's playing and doing his thing, he'll come over, he'll buy down something, go back. She goes, he was so infatuated with that, that he stopped everything he was doing. It was like nagging at her for more. Oh no. She goes, the nacho one. Yeah. Cause that and, matters. And so she goes, yeah, it was just really eye opening for, for me. She goes to see how powerful that is on his little brain because up until that point, he hasn't had any real processed foods. Dude, this, Everything's been, you know, the, whole natural foods. The MRI studies on they do these fMRI studies where they well, it's like they're watching the brain with blood flow and how it's reacting or whatever as someone's thinking something or doing something, and they do this with processed foods, and it lights the brain up in very similar ways to uh, hard drugs like yeah. cocaine. Well, and I imagine if they do that, I, and I don't know those studies if those studies are mainly on adults. 
But I can imagine that it, just like drugs, right? After you've tried drugs or done drugs several times, your body is adapted to it. So I imagine that the brain doesn't light up the same as the very first time that you do something like that. So I imagine when a kid has something like that, that's novel, that his brain's got to be going. And then she said she saw that. She goes, you know, you could just see it instantly. He's never acted that way with food. He's not clawing at it and want, wanting more of it like that. He's normally like, oh, whatever he eats and then he moves along. It, 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 uh, because you're, when, you're, when you're young, your brain is so plastic. So it's still, for, you know, once you hit, reach a certain age, there's like an, a part of your, there's a, a percentage of your brain that no longer is super plastic. This is why when you learn a language after a certain age, you have an accent forever. But like if Max, you could teach him five languages, he'll speak all of them fluently with no accent because the brain is so... So you got to imagine eating those foods that are like so engineered to do that. Yeah. They have to change. I, I would imagine they have to change the brain 100%. in fundamental ways, you know? 100%. I mean, you're talking, about, you're talking about decades of research and development on making these things so powerfully addicting. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. I don't know if I told you guys, but I was at my, I don't know if I shared this on the podcast. I share with my, my buddy's wife, tried to give him like a sucker. And I like kind of kind of snapped on her real quick. <laughs> She's like going like you, just, you ran well, and so smacked like, it. So we it was the weekend before <clears throat> we had I, my my godson just uh, turned three. No, no, no. And you or know, you, they, or you smack him yeah. so he associates. No, with like what? <laughs> it, no, it, they had they had this. He had a big old like monster truck birthday party, and they had the big jumpy house, and all the kids got you know these little you know they look like Happy Meal boxes that had toys and candy and stuff yeah. in it. So of course Max got one. And, and I wasn't like, no, you can't have it. I totally let him go through it and play it. And he's got a whole second. She's sitting next to me and I'm just watching him. I'm, I'm letting him kind of play in there and observe. And he's still not at a place where he, he can't take the wrapper out mm. and, and put it in his mouth or anything. So I don't care. I'm letting him play with it. He don't even know really what it is. So he's, and she's over there like, put it in your mouth, Max, put it in your mouth. She's like trying to encourage him to put it in his mouth. And I'm like, oh, I'm still ignoring it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting until he makes a move to even do that before I even say or do anything. And then she takes it from him to go shove it in his mouth. And I fucking whack. <laughs> Knock it out of her hand. Don't you dare give my son sugar. I said, I'll be the first person to introduce that to him. She got all, <laughs> she stood back and she was just like, hey, you know, you know he's going to get it eventually. I said, yeah, I know eventually. I'm not going to be a dad who doesn't let my kid ever have it, but I'll be the first one to introduce that to him. But she literally was going to take it and shove it in his mouth so she could see that reaction. And it's so funny how adults are just trained to want to do that because Kids do. They light up. They get excited. So your, it's your, not your kid, so you don't give a fuck if he's sprung for the next four hours at night. You know what I'm saying? So real quick to do that. And I was well, real you quick know, it's like, their, nah. their currency. You yeah. Know, like that. that's the, the, the biggest thing ever for them that they're always like fixated on. It's either that or video games. No, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. Because that, that was the challenge for, you know, Katrina's uh, brother is he's always used that as... You know, to he's get, the uncle that does that. Yeah, yeah. and you know, and I have a uh, his, his grandpa on on my on my mom's side. That's what he he would do. Also, is that's their way of bribing the kids. Mm -hmm. And then and the kids here's and here's a when you're an adult and you can kind of step back, especially when you have a kid, you kind of observe and see this stuff. Now, <clears throat> I'm watching the kids are so smart. I'm talking about three year olds, four year olds are so smart. They know what adult does that. And so even when you got, I got, I got family members that have parents. And if you're that adult, yeah. you'll love it. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. so the, the parents are like, they're over here like, okay, son, you've only had a couple, right? Trying, but then I see him kind of go back door, go find uncle who will keep handing them candy. And so all day long, you know, uncle's over here handing one piece at a time. And even though the parents are trying to moderate how much they eat, the kids know who will give it to them, and they. I watch them. You go yeah. over each each one and, and bribe, bribe I, them with candy. I like your rule. I think that was a smart because I think you know it's important to understand. It's, you don't want to be a you know like never because that could also backfire, right? Because right, then right. they could grow up, go to college. All of a sudden, they ha they they you know go nuts. I think your rule is good when he can ask for it. Then it, when he can verbalize, yeah, it, when he can verbalize, then he can try. Yeah, it, Dad, I want to be candy. Sure, we'll have one together, or I could teach him delayed gratification at that yeah. point. Mm -hmm. You sure you want this now, or do you want to? Right, right, right. So until then, like it's like, why would I do that? As of right now, he thinks that apple and grapes and strawberries are amazing. So like, why would I kill that already and give him this candy that's just going to completely change that yeah. that palate? Yeah, I know. When I was a kid, I didn't get a ton of that, but Nutella. For some reason, Italians think <laughs> Nutella is like a health food. <laughs> for, for whatever reason. Well, it's derived from a nut. It's not so bad, <laughs> it's, right? It's, it's, the commercials are funny, too. Nuts and milk. Oh, this is healthy, you know? Yeah. So here's a piece of white bread with some Nutella on it, kid. Taste, and I feel good that they're ready to tackle the day. 
Nutella. Breakfast never tasted this good. You know? Yeah. Uh. I imagine, though, like, <laughs> I, I, I would think that chocolate, especially something like hazelnut or dark chocolate, would be a lesser evil for a kid. Like You know, that. if you think about it, though, chocolate's got theo, I don't know if I'm saying it right, theobromine, uh, which is uh, chemically similar to caffeine. Mm-hmm. So you see a little kid eat like real chocolate. Is that an all chocolate or just dark chocolate? Like, uh, the just... more cacao that's in there, okay. then the more of that. And you'll see little kids are sensitive. So you'll see them eat like a real piece of chocolate. Yeah. And give it about bouncing off the wall. Give it about 30 minutes. Yeah. And then it's, uh, it's a good time. <laughs> and then it's not such a good time about an hour later <laughs> oh, when they yeah. come down. You ever see, no, you notice that when they come down? Yeah. It's like a, uh, like a come down from a drug. Mm-hmm. Like my kids would be shit. For like two or three hours later, they're just little assholes. Little, little zombies afterwards, too. And they just don't want to do anything. And you're like, come on. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They what, crash pretty hard. What are the ingredients on that Nutella there, Doug? Can you pull up the ingredients there? Oh, let's see here. Yeah. It's it's basically- It's 200 calories for two tablespoons. I know this because I make shakes out of it all the time. <laughs> do you, so, so. Dude, I have, that no, with I have, peanut butter have, is amazing. That's though. right. Let's no, I have, So you do two tablespoons of peanut butter, one tablespoon of Nutella protein uh, shake. So vanilla is what I like. And then like an almond milk blended on ice and a banana. And if you want to sprinkle some coffee grounds, well, hazelnut coffee grounds over the top of it. So oh. we got sugar, palm oil, hazelnut, skim milk, cocoa, soy, lecithin, and artificial flavors. Oh, okay. So oh. the first ingredient was what? Uh, sugar. sugar. Yeah, there you go. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, take that. <laughs> the majority. I'll tell you what, though. Yeah. It's delicious. Do you guys, do you use it a lot? Do you use it? Is not it in your house? No, not anymore. Oh, really? No, I don't have any in my house at all. Justin, what about you? Yeah, I mean, it, it shows up every now and then. It's really my fault yeah. uh, more than anybody. So, yeah, I like it, dude. I like it. I mean, I like, you know, every now and then throwing, like you said, in, in a shake or something like that or or just, you know, having a spoon with some uh, w- with some peanut butter like is like, you know, sort of it keeps me at bay. Between that and like a magic spoon kind of situation now, it's like I got something else is like kind of a treat, yeah. you know, that I could do that, that that's not quite as damaging. Yes. So. See, I like that strategy because we do live in the real world. This yeah. stuff is out there. And if you go to an extreme in one direction with your kids, it's going to backfire, right? Like with anything, right? If you're a Puritan about sex, you may have this kid that goes out and does a bunch of crazy, you know, unsafe yeah, yeah. You know, practices. Or whatever. Speaking of the magic spoon, I tasted the maple sugar one finally. Oh, that you was, did? Yeah, yeah. That's oh, actually like? really good. That's yeah. a, See, that's a great strategy because yeah. it's got that, uh, that palatable flavor but it's no sugar, high in protein. Yeah. Give that to your kid. It's going to have a different uh, a different effect. Well, I haven't even introduced that to him. Eventually, we will introduce that to him. But again, I think right now, so long as he's continuing to eat whole foods and loves it, I'm going to stay yeah. in that direction. Mm. Yeah, I'm stoked they keep coming out with new flavors because, yeah, my kids are like, th- there's like a window of novelty with them. And so they like it at first, but then like, uh, you know, I'm trying to introduce other things. Then they'll jump over and try the new flavors and like it, but they still like blueberry the best. You can make uh, Magic Spoon Krispies, you know, like Rice Krispies. Yeah. Uh, squares, you can make them with magic spoon. Yeah, I saw a, re- a recipe for that. Yeah, you've brought that up a few That's times. Jerry's made it for us. That oh, she did, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, was amazing. Yeah, you just make it with peanut butter. That's a peanut butter and honey. It's not any. It's not like marshmallows or anything. It's just peanut butter and honey. With, really? Yeah, it's peanut butter, honey, and then the chocolate flavored magic spoon. And then refrigerate it. Yeah, and you make it makes this like like a rice crispy treat, but it's no no marshmallows. Oh, that's incredible. Mm, yeah, no. yeah. So did you guys watch? Uh, I know we've been talking about waiting for Godzilla King Kong. Uh, did you guys end up watching it yet? So I went to start. Okay, so I went to start to watch it, but you I did? never, okay. I never watched the original Godzilla. So not the original original, but the Godzilla they did. It's right, not, it's not important. Oh man. Okay, so uh, on that lines, like, so the one with Matthew Broderick, the guy that was like uh, Ferris Bueller or whatever. Yes. Dude, that was the worst yes. movie I've ever seen. Yes. If you guys do, do yourself a favor, go back and watch that movie specifically and just like the jokes are so corny. This thing have high beams? No! It's so bad. Such a terrible movie. So I, I, I it was painful. I posted it up on my story and did like a thumbs up, thumbs down to get like a from the audience. Yeah. Yeah. And I got about, I want to say 70% people said thumbs down. But then I had a few people that we know that said, oh, it was amazing. He's I like, didn't like it. I had some people that said, get really high and watch it. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> well, so that's, that's, I mean, that's, all, that's all like, the monster. I'm like, there's, not a, that point. there's not a lot yeah. of things that are bad when you yeah. get really high. I was going to say, what, what, <laughs> except for like a, a paranoid movie. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah I mean? Yeah. I don't watch conspiracy theories. Yeah. Like yeah. You smoke yeah. weed. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So, then you'll be screwed. Uh, but you know, I did read though that the, it brought in thirty. It's number one in the box office right now. So Is it really? 30, it's, it's literally the only thing out right now. So that's what I thought too, right? I'm like, it's Rem- not that impressive. Like you're at the top of the shit pile, right? If you get yeah. if one, there's four movies out. Exactly. You're number one. It reminds me of the fir- when I got second place in my one of my first judo tournaments, and there was two people in my pool. It was me and the other guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got a trophy. <laughs> I, got a trophy. I, I lost. Well, I can't. So, do you guys remember what? Uh, maybe Doug can look this up. Like what? What box office numbers are considered good? Like thirty. 2.2 million is what I read is and it's number one is yeah. that I think that's really good right I don't know how much it costs it's the, the big ones that when you hear like Star Wars stuff they hit the 100, 100 million, million plus yeah. so now but, are they wrapping in HBO Max so and all that that's like, what I was curious that's why or? I'm asking you guys right now because I'm curious is <clears throat> because HBO HBO Max got it if you have HBO Max and you pay the monthly you got it for free that's right yeah. or I think you could have bought it like on Amazon nope. for, no you couldn't even no do it's that. nowhere it's nowhere but HBO Max until I think you have to wait a few weeks, and then you can rent it on Prime. Hmm. So is that how they're? So that, I'm wondering, like, what's we're in this weird transition right now, where these, like, Amazon, you, you Amazon always has these like uh, movies for 24 bucks to rent yep. now, that are, would normally be in the theater. So does that count towards box office now? Does Amazon get like a percentage I have no of idea. that? That's like, a great question. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm wondering. And is this going to be what we're going to see in the future? Like, even when COVID's gone and we're back to kind of going back to movie theaters like normal. Is there going to be this option going forward where you can always stream it from home for a, a premium price? Do you guys know? I, mean, I have no idea. No. That's a great question, though. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, pleased with it. I don't really like it that much. Did you yeah, like it? N- well, I didn't get to see it yet. We were actually going to go try and go to the theater to to, mm. to see it, but I don't even know if that's going to happen or not. But um, yeah, you know what was good was we went through all the monster movies, and really, Pacific Rim is the probably best the best one. It even is. the second one was better than any of the Godzillas and King Kongs. Yep. That, you know, I'll, I'll put my stamp on. Totally that. agree. Yeah. Doug, what would that stat pull up? Would you? Just- well, it's really based on how much the movie costs to make. So if it costs $100 million to make, if you have like a $25 million box fail. office, it's a fail. Mm. If it costs $10 million to make and you had a twenty five, then it's it's a yeah. success. Well, so. didn't I mean, I would imagine that movie costs a lot of money. Yeah, it was oh, a I'm sure it did. Yeah, yeah. What's, uh, that's why, what, remember Blair Witch Project? Project? Yeah. It was yeah. a huge success because they literally filmed it on handheld cameras and it crushed. Such a terrible movie. You really? <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I, w- I couldn't watch it. I got sick like in the first five minutes. Why? Because of the fucking camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That first person. You sure it's not because you don't like scary movies? No, well, you maybe, that, maybe that too a little bit. Well, you <laughs> had to, you had to yeah, believe that, that it was real going into the movie because like, like I got it, it was ruined for me because somebody had like revealed what what you know like they had just like staged this whole thing going in. They had this whole allure to it that this was really captured. They were in the woods and and they found some spirit ghosts. You it know, was chasing them. smart marketing because yeah. you made you think it was real. And then I forgot what other horror movie did really smart marketing where they didn't usually a trailer shows the movie right mm-hmm. so you see stuff that happens. This trailer, I can't remember what the movie was, but it showed the audience in the theater. They didn't even show any of the movie. They just showed the audience- Just l- freaking out. Freaking out. And yeah. it basically was, the sc- like, this movie was too scary for whatever. And you're like, oh my gosh, dude. I want to go watch Why? this. Why? Why yeah. is it so scary? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. I watched uh, Justice League. I finally watched it. The long cut. Oh, so I, I'm halfway through it right now. Good. What do you think? Uh, you know, so far, so good. It was good. I'm not a fan of of like uh, DC. In the fr- really? Yeah, I'm not a big mm. DC guy in the first place. And so I actually didn't even watch, I don't think I watched the full original Justice League. So this is kind of like new to me altogether. So what I was curious about, and Katrina and I were watching it last night, how different is is this one from the original Justice League? Wait, wait, dude, it, it developed, it's like a different movie. Well, so I don't feel like it's different. I feel like the storyline is the same. They just develop every character. That's what I mean. If okay. you watch it, it develops all the characters. There's a lot of backstory. It's much so deeper. So what do you guys know? Okay, school me on the, I don't know much about, like, I don't follow this nerd shit. You guys are more into this. So <laughs> what is- so cool. Hey, man. So, so, hey, so cool. So, but he's know, still yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. it. I'm not saying that. Just you guys, you guys are more into this nerdy shit than I am. That's the, true. And the, so explain the, the director we're just more honest what's his name Snyder or what's it Zack Snyder Zack Snyder so what it, I don't get it so there was a, a different director that did the, this one this is his take on it why the fuck does he get to do that like I don't understand I have no idea I think he did them both but I think that the studio edits it and says no here's your here it is an hour and a half and yeah. he got angry he's uh-huh. like no I, I, I wanted to include all the stuff too long 
So then they came out with the Zack Snyder cut. Or okay, so now that, what's interesting to me is like what. So what, they get to sell it twice, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so what, mm-hmm. I'm interested to know like what's happening. Is it is it outperforming the original one? I mean, the feedback when you look at like Rotten Tomatoes is is higher, I believe, on way higher the yeah. longer one yep. than it was on the short. It's yep. Probably because it got such bad reviews. The other one, the other right? one sucked. So that's the, they probably were open to to then exploring you know the director's yeah. cut. It's funny. I was watching it. Jessica's gonna get mad, but whatever. I was watching it, and uh, it, so it took me like two days to watch this four hours long. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm watching it. Of course, you know, what's her name? <laughs> Wonder Woman pops up and Jessica's always like, hey, it's your crash, your movie crash. Anyway, so. I'll she's, watch it just for that. Yeah. So she's ignoring the movie or whatever. And then, of course, there's the scene with Jason Momoa, you know, and he's like, Aquaman, his shirt's off. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to go in the ocean. Blah. And she's playing with the baby and I catch her <laughs> just staring at the TV. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm like, you, she's like, and then she's like, oh, she's like, is this the new Justice League? She's like, you know, I, I'll watch it with you a little bit. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> you just saw Jason Momoa with his shirt off. Uh, now you want to sit down with me and watch it. Uh, <laughs> I don't really like him anymore. But get out of uh, here! Man. You got him and Ben Affleck. I always over. wonder, like how, like uh, how much of like a pump those guys get before each cut. Do they actually let him go get like oh, in the come pump? on, dude? Oh, yeah. I mean, you could totally tell. I could tell his chest is like full yeah. of blood when he when they do a clip, dude. You can see 100. Oh, percent I'm like, oh, this dude, dude right? Yeah. Right? No, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's like sat in the yeah. bathroom before we hit the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Let's hurry up and finish the podcast. Take. This is all. I'm losing my all natural. Hey, did you know he's a big dude, right? Momo, isn't he? Tall, tall, big dude. I don't know. I don't think he's a tiny actor like the most of them. I think he's an actually big dude. Yeah, he looks big. Yeah, but you he, never he know. Could he be. Is he? Right. Look him up, Doug. How big is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Between him and uh, God, what's the guy's name that plays six Superman? four? Six, oh six, shit, he oh, is a big dude. He's a big dude, bro. He is a big guy. Now, and then who's the guy Chris, that plays Chris Helmsworth? Is, is a big guy. He's a big too. guy. Who's yeah. the guy that plays Superman? I can't remember. Uh, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Cav- Cavill. Yeah. That has to be the best looking man in the world. I I, I'm telling you right now. I yes. see the guy's face. I'm like, you'd fuck him, huh? That maybe. Yeah. It's like somebody he made loves him. That little butt chin. Yeah. Yeah. And like just, this guy looks like you. a cartoon character. Yeah. What the hell's going on? Really? Yeah. He's a little just bit. Of, squeeze yeah. that little cheek. A little yeah. bit of a crush going yeah. on. Right there. <laughs> anyway, speaking of cool stuff, more UFO stuff. Dee 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 dee. Justin. What? This is cool. So they just declassified this. This is actually kind of cool. UFOs were observed. This is from the DOD. I think the Department of Defense or Justice, maybe DOJ. They saw this UFO break the speed barrier, like beyond the speed barrier, zero sonic boom. So it went faster than the speed of sound, no sonic boom whatsoever. So what do you think that tells you? Any guesses? Anti-gravity. Something like that, right? Yeah. So, you know, okay, so speed of sound, in order to go faster than the speed of sound, you got to go about 750 miles an hour. And we have jets that do this, right? We have jets that go, you know, beyond the speed of sound. And what happens when you pass it- How fast is Mach 1? I think that is the speed of sound, 750, if is I'm not mistaken. I think so. I think every mock is, I'm probably wrong. Someone's going to hammer me on DM. Maybe Doug can look this yeah. up. Yeah, but when, when you, when above you, above my pay grade, when you break the speed barrier, the, the shock waves converge and create this, what's called sonic boom, where you hear this because it went faster, right? <clears throat> well, this UFO was observed 767. So look at that. So is Mach 1 that right there, Doug? Yes. Okay. So Mach 1 is the speed of sound. And then every, like Mach 2 is twice the speed of sound. Do we so have anything? Um, this is a stupid question. Do we have anything that goes Mach two? Do we I have think any? the Blackbird the is the fastest jet that we know of that we've ever made. The one that they made to spy on the Soviets. Yeah, and I think that went Mach three. It maybe? flies way up in the atmosphere, like at the very top, almost yeah. in space. And Mach three. That's the one so that twenty one hundred miles an hour plus twenty two. That's the one. Maybe you can look it up too, Doug. This Holy is, shit! So the Blackbird was the one that they were building at Roswell. And that was when they did the disinformation campaign. So they, right. they actually purposely made people think there were UFOs there so that nobody thought that they, we were actually making. So what makes you think that all of this isn't just more that's, misinformation? That's what I think. I mean, I think they're just trying to distract us. I don't know. Well, whatever. Kind of yeah. crazy. Look at that. It's 2,100 miles an hour. Damn, that's insane. So anyway, this UFO was observed going faster than the speed of sound, zero sonic boom, which tells... which. Tells me, or other people, I guess, or you could you could theorize that it's not moving through space, but rather bending space. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's not going through the space as we know it. It's bending space, which is why it can move so fast and not. Well, well explain that. It's, what do you what do you explain that? All oh, right, we're gonna. This is gonna be fun. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't, can't just say some, you can't just say some science. shit like that. I need a, uh, <laughs> if I had a piece of paper, I could explain this. Maybe Doug can throw me a piece. It, of like, paper. It creates its own gravity. You have a piece of, like a sheet of paper because like, it's we're going have a science project. Case, because it's going so fast, it's bending time. That's what it's, you're, yes. No, 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 no. Not because it's going so fast. It that's how it travels. It bends space. 
and moves through. So here, pass me this piece of paper. So like, I saw this on like a movie folds. once. I thought this was a great uh, explanation. Oh God, this of, is going to be fun. Yeah, yeah here, pass yeah. that to me. <laughs> you know what he's going to do? He's gonna I don't need a pen. I he's going to draw me a flux capacitor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Get the fuck out of here right. with this guy. So You're imagine, just going to have to believe, Adam. Yeah. So imagine this This <laughs> yeah. is space Make, right here. Easier yeah, for this all sheet of paper is space, right? Okay. And you want to go from here <clears throat> To here, so you got to move through all this space to go from here to here. The speed limit is the speed of light. Nothing fast, go faster than the speed of light. So to go from here to here, you can go as fast as you want, and speed of light is theoretically as fast as you go. However, so here's one point. Here's one another point. If you bend space, now the points are together, Voila. and now going from one to the other can happen instantaneously. Yeah, isn't that cool? I watched I, a movie on that once. Th I mean, that sounds. That's cool. your science lesson for today. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bill Nye. You're welcome. I, I don't know if that helped me get any closer to it. Really? Is, I don't think so. make it's sense even to you? More well, I mean, no, because how do they how do they bend time? Well, I don't know, bro. Come on. These are aliens. Yeah. yeah. These are alien, <laughs> technology. alien technology. I wish I knew how they did this. I don't I see it. I don't You're think always that, skeptical. I, of shit. I am very skeptical of this bullshit. How do they, I don't I, how do how do they make TVs? Is that I really just, your uh, image? I just think <laughs> I just think if we had aliens, they would have they would have dropped in and said what's up by now. I don't mm. think that they're flying around. I think that we we are so you think there's no but they have been it's been well, look, suppressed what do you know about the Come cia on, man. Huh? What, do you, what do you know about the cia i don't know nothing bro. right yeah. you know shit about uh, the cia yeah. and a lot of the, a lot of this them. stuff that we a lot of this stuff that Careful, we they're listening we know about right now okay that that technology's been around for a long time we're just finding so out you about think we made the ufos I, well, okay, if you want to call it a UFO, I think we made the whatever it is and we that we're, can bend space. I guess. Wow. You know, I don't I don't I don't subscribe or it's there and we're I don't trying subscribe to, to a, a big that's, fucking greenhead guy that's, that's flying what, up. That's there. what I think, Justin. Yeah, I huh? think that. I mean, I kind of What do you think? So, you know, I think that it's there. We found it and we're trying and to reverse engineer yeah. it. You yeah. know, okay, so here's why I don't think it's humans. Uh, cuz I've heard that theory and it sounds kind of cool, right? Oh, that's our technology and we're trying to hide it from the, you know, the Russians and whatever and Here's why I don't believe that. If a country, any country, had the technology to do that, they would instantly be the world superpower by so much, by so far, it would be insane. If you had that, mm -hmm. you would. That would be it. Do you really think so? Ugh, to be able to travel instantaneously anywhere is that, is that more powerful than a, a nuke that would blow yeah. up a fucking country? You launch a nuke from China, and as as it launches, your whole your whole country is exploded because we just. Transported shit to your freaking door, your doorstep. Yeah, I don't come know. on, dude. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I'm. You got to read it. more of this shit. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> you're into some more sci-fi, yeah. dude. Put your tinfoil hats on, dude. I, <laughs> I think it's. I think there's. You know what? There's other shit going on. Why are we still? Why still? When we talked about Epstein Island, that fucking just went away because all this weird shit. There's like, probably aliens there too. That's what no one's talking about. <laughs> like crazy stuff like that. I think that's crazy. And then all of a sudden, well, COVID mail island. COVID yeah. comes around, and then and then UFOs come around, and like it's no to one's distract us from Epstein's yeah, island. Yeah, no one's talking about that anymore. Nah. Like, what happened with that? It's the cabal mm. of Satanists, I think. Oh, I don't, you know. <laughs> Wow, really? we're really getting, we're going, getting after it. We're yeah. going hard. Yeah, yeah. In that. <laughs> hey, hey, speaking of celebrities, you guys, uh, Charles Barkley, did you hear his little speech on- uh, I love Charles Barkley. That guy's great. He's man. on my- He yeah. literally doesn't care. He'll just say whatever. I truly believe in my heart, most white people and black people are awesome people, but we're so stupid following our politicians, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, and their only job is, hey, let's make these people not like each other. We don't live in their neighborhoods. We all got money. Let's make the whites and blacks not like, like each other. Let's make rich people and poor people not like each other. Uh, let's let's scramble the middle class. I truly believe that in my heart. Yeah, he's on my top three. Like to it's have a breath of fresh air. Now he's is he getting heat for what he's? He's and, always getting heat. That's why I love him. So like, he don't he, care. He, yeah, he says whatever he wants to say, and he always gets heat. Because he he obviously doesn't subscribe to what you know half of his his company or the NBA subscribes to. So, yeah, no, he gets a lot of hate. Now, is he did he did he say so? Basically, what he said for the audience doesn't know. He essentially said I don't know how it came up because I don't watch the whole thing, but he essentially said both political parties their goal is to separate everybody. They don't care. They just want everybody to hate each other so that they look like the saviors or so that they get. Yeah, and he for. says they're using race and class. Mm -hmm. You know, it's black versus white, it's rich versus poor, and it's all to divide and conquer. And, and I mean, I don't think there's the funny part. I don't think there's anything controversial about that whatsoever. I know, it's, but some it seems people, pretty, pretty straightforward. But yeah, again, it is coming from him. It's, it's. I think it's. You know, people are like, "Whoa, I can't believe he said that." You know, and it's on national television. Yeah. So. Well, my favorite example of that is the marketing campaign that Pepsi and Coke did uh, in the '80s. For anybody who grew up in the '80s, you remember the Cola Wars. This was like big thing on TV. You saw 
you know, it was the, you know, do the, the cola challenge. And it would be like people trying Pepsi, trying Coke, but they don't know what's Pepsi and Coke. And you got to pick one. And Coke was paying for these commercials and Pepsi was paying for these commercials. And both of them were like, which one is the better cola? Unbeknownst to people, it was agreed upon that they would do this. And it literally took share, market share away from 7up, Sprite, you know, everybody else. Because everybody thought Put tab out of business. that there were two choices. Oh, I'm going to pick Pepsi or Coke. And yeah. they dominated because yeah. of this. Nobody knew. That this was the strategy. Speaking totally- of companies, you see uh, Facebook's in hot water right now. Why? Did you guys see that? The uh, 533 million uh, uh, people's contact got uh, leaked. You, what? Yeah, yeah. Look it up, Doug. I think oh, just to make sure I'm on point. So here. their information, like they got yeah, hacked? Yeah, or- yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. I think 533 million. You know, that's pretty scary <clears throat> because uh, Facebook is more informed on its users than any company or country ever. Because it knows everything, it knows everything about your what you what you click on, what you like, what you comment on, what you buy. So they know a lot. Wow, account records leaked on a hacking forum. Wow. See, that's not good. That's no. not good at all. I wonder who t- who hacked it. Yeah. I, yeah, they they let it go for free though. They didn't even sell it. What do you mean? They, I mean, they, it was someone didn't sell it. They just put it out there for free. Normally, I mean, these companies are selling this stuff. You notice when you get on like uh, like HBO Max, we we're talking about. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this. If you guys are you guys subscribed to HBO Max? Yes, I am. Okay, so if you go to your app <clears throat> on your oh, phone, oh, it does the confirmation thing, right? Well, you can, you have the option, and by the way, it's turned off unless you go and turn it on. Mm. So you have the option for it. Literally says, you know, do you want the company to have the right to be able to sell your information? Oh, and it's automatically turned on that you will let them do that unless you go into your app and actually turn it, shut it off. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to cancel them immediately. I don't really care. We talk about this all the time. Yeah, does this freak anybody out? I mean, is anybody like unsubscribing because of, of course, things like this? Of course. I want to know the statistics Yeah, on that, no, there's a, I, there's a, I mean, I don't know how many people uh, unsubscribe to Facebook after this. I mean, I saw some people outraged about it. Yeah, because um, I always see people outraged, but then they're still on Facebook, still crying about it. You know what's you know, funny to me, though? It's happening. always the people, nobody gives a fuck. Nobody That's is, what I mean. It's nobody, like, you nobody love the is, service so much. That nobody's like, listening to your uh, boring ass conversation. Yeah. Nobody's reading your fucking you know emails. What though? <laughs> you, know, you know what, though? Okay, so here's the deal. I don't think it's that. I think what it is, is if you have all this information on 500 million users and it's detailed, you have a very effective way of potentially, potentially excuse me, manipulating them yeah. through targeted news and ads and stuff. Which well, every election ma- season, oh, yeah, pay attention. Man- You're manipul- a commodity. Okay, manipulating is a strong word. You make the decision to click on that fucking app. You sure do. That's not manipulation. But just like That's- obesity, you introduce uh, heavily processed food and people's yeah, but behaviors just, change. Okay, well, I don't want processed foods to be illegal. Yeah, so it's the same same difference. Yeah, you know, know. you make the cho- you make the choice to click on that. No, you're right. It's and, always personal responsibility. <clears throat> and the you're way right. I look at it is this: <clears throat> I don't get emotional now. I <laughs> look, I look at <laughs> awful <clamped. clears throat> It doesn't bother me because I prefer that when I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, any of these platforms, the ads that hit me aren't like a woman's product. They're yeah. targeted. They're all things that yeah. I'm interested in. Yeah, they are getting better. Yeah, they, they are. They, they are. get me all the time now. No, for they like do. Products that I'm like, oh man, yeah. I, I do want They're that. Like Star Wars yeah. underwear. Yeah. It's like, yeah. damn it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do they know me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, solo underoos. <laughs> I'm in. They okay. do though. They're getting, yeah. they're getting really, and that's really what all this is about. That's what all these companies sell that information to other companies so they can advertise to you better. And sure. the information that Facebook has, what's so valuable, is because we go around like a bunch of sheep liking everything. And, and then they you know. know. Yeah, and then they know. I then. purposely like and dislike shit that's not true for me. Wow. You know so what I mean? So you get shitty ads. Yeah, re- nah, rebel. Exactly. Yeah. That's you know a, what I mean? That's oh, a, I, I like. Uh, you know, that's I like, a great strategy. Yeah. So speaking of hacking, uh, there were Chinese hackers, this is coming out now, that have been hacking into people's security cameras. Uh huh. And recording them having sex. So you know you have, your, you have the security cameras in your house, like whatever company that you go with. Yeah. They're finding videos of people having sex from the security cameras. They're capturing them and then selling them on the dark web. Wow. So people's sex videos are getting sold, but they're not obviously- Are they outdoors? Like, yeah. What, got- hey, <laughs> I, hey, I'm thinking the same thing right now. Who the fuck's putting ring yeah. in their bedroom? Yeah. I, hey, look. Just, by that time, if he's in there, you're fucked. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let- hey honey, we got to put on a show today for yeah. the neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. So people have them in their house. They have cameras in their house. 
Yeah, yeah but not your bedroom. Yeah. What, okay, is that who, the only who's, place who's you have sex, that? Adam? Have you ever had sex in the kitchen? I do. I'm a dad now, bro. Shut yeah, up, bro. Yeah. 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 I'm, kitchen I'm, I'm sure yeah, Friday you did. I'm lucky to get it in the fucking bedroom. You know what I'm yeah, saying? <laughs> what a <laughs> lie, dude. Katrina's <laughs> listening right we're now. Not, we're not bachelors yeah. anymore on the top of the laundry like, room, laundry room the anymore. fucking kitchen. Like, come on, dude. You got kids now. I almost. Are you having sex everywhere? Of course. Fucking liar. You know why? Hey, hold on. Such a liar. Hey, hey, hold on. You know why? Because the baby sleeps in our bedroom. I'm not talking about with your baby sleeps. I'm not talking about with yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about you sneaking away into your pantry and jerking off. I'm talking about (laughs) sex, bro, with your wife. You ain't having the sex. laundry room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm doing laundry. Yeah, don't come in. Yeah. No sneaky dad sessions. People yeah. do it all. It. Listen, people do it all over, and they're capturing these videos and they're freaking selling them. That's a news story, Adam. Yeah. Why are you deny everything? Well, it's not that I'm denying. Uh, that's a lie. I mean, it's like like two people. Well, <laughs> no, it's a lot. This is somewhat similar, but like so in local news, uh, basically, you know that that place, the Cats, that restaurant, yeah, yeah. as you drive yeah. by, yeah, yeah, everything, yeah. right? So yes. it's like great barbecue. Yeah, staple place, right? So during the lockdowns and everything. Thing, I guess they had been caught keeping it open and they kept it open from the hours of like 10 o'clock at night until 5 a.m. Oh, it's like a speakeasy. Yeah, but not just a speakeasy. Apparently, they've been having adult entertainment in there. What? Yeah, this whole time. They've been having like strippers and, and you know, whatever else they're doing in there that's considered you know adult what? entertainment. That's like a biker bar. It's like, I bet you a bunch of Hells Angels and stuff roll down uh, there all the time. Every time I go by there, there's like 40 bikes that are parked wait, out so there. Did they get so ain't nobody fucking. My nobody, mind was blown. Nobody's like, fucking with them for sure, dude. Wow. Did they get busted or something? Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah, it's got busted. It's like $77,000 of a uh, fine that they just well, got. I get, but I'm sure they made more than that. I, yeah, I, I, I know, guess right? if you're gonna break the law, this is what happens, by the way, when you pass a bunch of laws Stupid that laws. people don't follow. As soon as people break one law, they're more likely to break others. <laughs> For sure. So, like, well, we're open, we're not supposed to be, yeah. might as well get some well, strippers we get in here. Some strippers, <laughs> well, know? maybe they could do other things. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It just goes from there. <laughs> we're yeah. already there, yeah. Just jump off the bed. I didn't even know that. That just went down or what? Yeah, it just yeah. went down. They wow. cracked down. Adam didn't know that. Watch, we're going to show up. Man. Adam, on, welcome annoying. back. We got your chair for <laughs> you. Like, Dude, we had that as an option? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. That's hilarious. Hey, a flyer out there or something. I, I got some exciting uh, sports news. Uh, this is kind of cool. What? Shut up, bro. This is the sports that I like. <laughs> just, let's, let's hear Let's hear this. Whoa, take my breath away. Yeah, yeah, no. uh, I'm waiting for this. No, uh, guess what got included in the 20, 2024 Olympics? For the first time. Uh, my guess is jiu-jitsu. Uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I was going to say, it's the only thing you know anything oh, about. Yeah. It's like- <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it wasn't... Uh, they, they used to, you know that they used to have competitive art, like sculpting and painting? In the and, Olympics? In the Olympics. How the hell do you do that? How do you do that? It was like the 74, I think, is when they stopped doing it. But competitive art? Competitive art. So anyway, so now I have jiu-jitsu. That's yeah, dude, how the hell do you, <laughs> do, you, do you win at art? I don't, I don't know. know. You know, you just... Remind, did you guys ever watch... Did you guys watch the... Um, the Netflix, the the college scam one yet? No. Oh, you guys haven't watched that? No. Oh, that's really good. Is it really? Oh, it's really good. What's it, Doug? Do you know what I'm Is talking this about? The parents that get in, they got yes. on the scam. Yeah, I remember in the girl from Full House. She was like obviously all over the news, but it was a big scandal for a long time. And what's crazy to me, like, and that's why I want you guys to well, watch it. It's been it. going forever. Yeah, yeah, you guys need to watch it so we could talk about it because it blew up because this one guy was doing like a side door deals and he'd been doing it for decades. Hmm getting all these kids in colleges. But the truth is, colleges still do it. Yeah. Col- I mean, you still have the option, if you, as, a, as a parent, if you want to donate $50 million to Harvard – for them to, you yeah. know, more likely look at your child. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty. I'm pretty sure your yeah, kid will wink, get in. Wink, wink. You know, like, yeah. I'll pay for this. And, what you, and what he, what, where he was brilliant. Okay, in his defense, I know everybody's not gonna like that, but you know, what was brilliant about it was he created a side door because of all this connections and relationships. So it wouldn't cost you fifty million. It cost you five hundred thousand or a million. Mm-hmm. You know, so so he was he was bypassing the uh, the actual colleges and how they do it, and he was basically backdooring them because wow. he had all these relationships. With all these small teams, what, what reminded me of it because these these funny sports you brought up, a lot of these colleges have like you know like Harvard had sailing, sailing like is not profitable. It doesn't make any money whatsoever. So they let him on the sailing team, give him a scholarship type. Yes, deal? Oh. and nobody checks. Nobody checks if he shows up to practice or doesn't. And yeah. so since the, your since, job is to fold the, the you know, <clears throat> and so he would sail. he would go in with these these coaches and he'd build relationships with them. And be like, hey, could I get a spot on on the team? And I'll make sure I give the team your. You know, and you know, you got a, a guy who's running sailing. He's passionate about it. He wants yeah. it to be successful. He wants it to make money for the school and and be able to get all the new gear and shit. But they ain't giving him shit. Then all of a sudden, you get this dude who comes around and says, hey, 
just get me get me one spot on the team. I'll get you a million dollars next year for the program, mm. and don't you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Just you know, he, he's not going to show up to practice. Just you know, let you it know go. if it's a if it's a private school, a private college. I mean, this is I mean that's just the it's world all a hustle. Yeah, I mean you know it's like if you're wealthy, you can buy a better car too. You could pay for a lot of things that you know other people can't pay for. So it, you know, I get conflicted about it. it. Sounds shitty because I'm sure there's regulations and stuff against that. Oh yeah, but, it's very illegal. Yeah, yeah, but the, I mean, the reality is, if it's especially if it's a private school. Well, this is where I, mean, I wanted. To, I really wanted you guys to see it so we could chat about this because, as a dad now, right? So there's, I feel a little bit conflicted too. Like, uh, yeah, I'm nobody. Okay, when you're rich and you help your kid do this, like for sure, everybody fucking hates those people. Yeah. But there's a side of me that goes like, God, I mean, is, is it that different or is that that bad that these parents are doing everything they can to get the best life for their kids, right? Even if that means bending the yeah, rules. It's and, human and, nature, really. And yeah, but what kind of kid are you actually raising? I, well, I, agreed. I mean, I, that's what I think the problem is because if you do everything for your kid, you're going to raise a shitty kid. I don't disagree. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think there's, I think where nobody has empathy for these parents that are trying to do this, it's like, you're rich, that's your... That's that's your muscle, right? If you're, if that's that's your power, that's your flex. If mm -hmm. you, if you're, you're, if you got that much, that much money, and you have a kid who, you know, their dream is to go to Princeton or Harvard or like that. Do you not explore pull some strings? Right. Do you not? And you have connections and relationships with the right people. And a, a five hundred thousand dollars is nothing to you to make sure your kid. And a lot of these parents, they actually didn't want their kid. They're shielding their kids from knowing. Yeah, but what's you know what I'm saying? Though, think about it though. Oh, and they shield their kids. Like, oh my god, that's disgusting. I yeah. know, I know. You're gonna raise a, a, a shitty weak kid. That's really how how they got caught up was the 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 full house chick. I forget her name. Whatever her name is, she has two daughters. And the second daughter was kind of like, she kind of fucked around and she, they both got into UCLA and everybody's like, oh, how did that happen? Yeah. And, and that's what blew it up was because she, cause she was famous on Instagram. Mm. She had like a million followers and she had makeup deal as a kid, right? At 17 years old and stuff. And she's on there all the time, never studying, never talking about school or that. And then all of a sudden gets into UCLA. Lori Laughlin. <laughs> yeah. Her that's her name. Thank you, Doug. She served prison. Yeah. Anyway, dude, I'd be like, sorry, you're going to community college, buddy. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's, I mean, that's the right thing to do. You, I'm mean, not saying that I would necessarily do that, but I mean, everybody is like, just wanted to crucify these parents for doing things like that. And I'm just saying that I understand. I understand if you're, it, you're everybody in, wants to, to have their kid avoid <laughs> hardship and wants to take care of them. I mean, I get that. Yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, what do you think when you really think about it? Like what kind of kid are you raising? Yeah. That's why so many of these, successful people they have kids that are not great they're not successful they don't understand how to do anything for themselves they end up becoming losers but living off mom and dad or whatever it's because they never learned how well, to do the, it on the, their own the statistic the statistic on uh millionaires that inherit i think is like 14 percent something like that. most millionaires are self-made yeah, yeah like 80 percent of yeah. most millionaires were are self-made right yeah. so they didn't inherit it beforehand so yeah, I mean, I'm, I would say a majority probably of these kids that, you know, step into the real world already as millionaires, they end up blowing it all anyways, and then they don't end up going anywhere. Yeah, so. I wonder if it's like if you inherit it, you're more likely to then do that with your kid. But if you earn it, let's say you grew up and you're, you know, middle class or lower class and you built your business, mm. I wonder if you're less likely to do that because you know the value of it. So you're like, yeah, no, sorry. maybe. Or you don't want your kid to go through that kind of hardship, you know, and you're conflicted by that. But yeah, yeah I would think... I would think like some of those values would carry over. Hmm. Yeah, I just think it's interesting how people get so mad and, and angry about it. And you just we assume that that is that person is in is better off because they get all the money and they get everything from you. Which I would make the case that hmm. money isn't the answer. Getting everything you want isn't. No, you the answer. skip the lesson. Not only do you skip the lesson, <clears throat> but you're the way you value things is totally different. I mean, there's you ever watch somebody who didn't have very much right. come up and work really hard to get to a place and look how they take care of the little things, like their car or their room. Or no, like, you're right. And mm -hmm. this, by the way, the science is quite, uh, it's quite uh, confident in this. The science is pretty established that money, up in, the last study that was done showed that no additional happiness was brought past about $75,000 a year. Yeah. So once your your needs are met, so unless you're like, oh my God, I'm struggling to have a place to live. I don't have money to take care of myself. Once you're past that point, which you know, if you live in a modern society, is pretty achievable for most and people. And I would imagine it looks kind of like a bell curve. Yeah, I would you, imagine that it peaks, and then the more and more and more it doesn't you do make, anything for the you. more likely you're to be depressed and suicidal. It actually and, doesn't do anything for you. So once you have those needs met, there's nothing that you derive from money. What it is, and again, the science is pretty, and Arthur Brooks talks about this. This is his expertise. 
is your family and friends, relationship with your family and friends. Do you have a job that provides you with a sense of meaning and purpose? That's important. You got to feel like you're contributing to society somehow. So it could be volunteer work. It could be a job, something that you feel like is providing purpose. And then do you have a spiritual practice? Those things right there are what bring happiness, not money. At, throwing additional money or becoming more beautiful or doing that stuff won't the 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 return is almost zero with any more than that. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you something that's uh, I'm really excited about. I don't know if you guys all know this. I think I share. I, think, I don't know if I shared it with all of you or just some of you. Uh, I see Justin's rocking his Felix Grays. They reached out Handsome. to us. Uh, yeah. They reached out to us a couple weeks ago, and um, we are in. The, we're looking into a furthering our partnership where we do uh, like branded glasses with them. I thought that was really cool. Oh yeah. The, they've had yeah. so much success with the show, and we we're obviously one of the first partners with them, and they've just exploded. They're popping mm -hmm. up all over the place. You know, they're in the mall down here now. Well, the thing about them, and this is a big deal, if you've never worn blue blockers, is most blue blockers change the color of everything. So they're either orange or red. And if you're on electronics, if the reason why you're wearing them is so that you can be on electronics before bed, right? Trying to block blue light so you get better sleep. But now you got orange glasses. You're watching your movie. And the whole movie is orange or whatever, and that makes a difference. It really does. Well, that was the that was the but the Felix rays don't change the color. That was yeah. the deal breaker for me when I mean I remember you were wearing the blue blockers even before we were messing with Felix Gray, and I just couldn't get behind it. As much as you swore up and down like what a difference it made on your sleep and you felt so much better, I just I could not put them on and I watch television at night. I mean I watch my favorite shows and it distorts all of it and I care about that stuff. There's a reason why I spend that much money on a stupid TV is so I get like this crazy crystal clear picture. You throw an orange lens over it and it ruins yeah. that experience. Yeah. So Have that you tried eating? I tried eating food with the orange lenses and it makes your food not nearly as enjoyable. You forget how much of the, uh, the association what, with the colors. 100%. And it's, yeah. a, it's a part of making food palatable. Yeah. But in fact it might be a good strategy to make you eat less. Put on some red or purple glasses or whatever, yeah. eat your food, you'll probably end up eating less. Dude, that reminds me of uh, when Ketchup, uh, when they came out with like, it was an black. orange and a black they could, yeah, and color. It failed. Oh, big time. Yep. Yeah. Who wants to put black? It looks like like something rancid. You just squirt it on your hot dog. Yeah. What about, uh, was it clear, Pepsi clear? That didn't sell. I so like that too, though. Really? As a kid, don't you remember that? I mean, I thought it was cool as a kid. I liked it just because Van Hagar was all, you know, singing about oh, it. Oh, you won? Yeah, they yeah, got you yeah. with the advertising. Yeah. Hey, real quick before we get to the questions, if you love the podcast, you'll love our written content. Head over to mindpumpfree.com and download some of our free guides. They're awesome. We wrote them ourselves. Go check them out. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, our first question is from Silverall Training. What are your thoughts on the afterburn effect of exercise, aka EPOC? Do you really burn a lot more calories after a HIIT workout compared to what one would burn doing, during a low intensity, steady state cardio workout. Did I share? Did I share the article with you guys? Mm, uh, I think he did. Yeah. I, I did. Didn't I share uh -huh. it on the show? So just like a couple weeks ago, uh, men's <clears throat> I think it was Men's Health. I want, I want to say it's Men's Health that came out with it. Doug can fact check me. They they were hammering uh, Orange Theory about this. In fact, because that was our big selling point. Yeah. Right? yeah. In fact, Orange Theory has changed a lot of their marketing because of that, which. Ironically, if you go back, if you've been listening to Mind Pump long enough, this was the bone that I had to pick with them way back when I was working with them. Was we came in, and of course, just like a, a, a typical company, you start working with them, they have their whole training process. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I'm in there with a lot of these like green trainers, and they're talking about, you know, Epoch and how amazing it is. And I'm mm -hmm. sitting back there going like, really? Come on, <laughs> dude, we've already we have, we've already dispelled this. It's not even that. That's not yeah, that big it's of a difference. Minuscule. No. Yeah, but they they had built at that time their entire hype was around these the benefits of epoch and like how yeah. how revolutionary it was and I'm, and so they had they had the first few years that they had came out they had marketed to this quite a bit and they've already redacted a lot of the stuff that they were saying before because of this and men's health came out not that long ago oh there it is right there yeah. came out not long ago and was right it was just about a month ago so they came out and they've been hammering them uh, over this. And yeah. so, yeah, the answer is no, the epoch is, uh, I think it was in the seventies or eighties when it first came out mm -hmm. when they first started doing studies around it, it's negligible. Uh, I mean, we're splitting hair difference uh, on the benefits of that. And so when you it's, hear people talk about it, it makes me chuckle. It's based on a false paradigm of fitness. And that's the, this paradigm that the benefit of exercise is, comes from the calorie burn while you do the exercise. This is a false paradigm, right? So people think, okay, we learned a long time ago that in order to lose weight, you need to create what's called an energy uh, imbalance. In other words, 
you take in less calories than you burn or vice versa, right? Burn more calories than you take in. That means your body has to tap into fat in order to make up the difference and you lose weight. And so the paradigm was created that, oh, in that case, let's exercise a lot, burn more calories. That's going to be a very effective strategy for fat loss. It's a terrible strategy, never works for the following reasons. Number one, you don't burn that many calories when you exercise. I don't care how hard you work out. You're going to burn maybe in an hour, 400 calories, 500 calories. And you may think, oh, that's a lot of calories. No, it's mm -hmm. not. Four or 500 calories, you could eat in five, you could drink that in five minutes. It's okay. not much. It doesn't that's make that- That's why it's a losing strategy. It's a losing strategy. So, and, and, and here's the other part. If you're constantly trained to just burn calories, your body does a very good job of adapting, slowing down its metabolism in many different ways, even affecting the rest of your activity throughout the day. To balance it out. So what ends up happening is you burn 500 more calories a day. Let's say you work out every single day real hard for an hour. What you find over time is your body actually balances out and you stop yeah. burning those extra calories. Here's the paradigm that you want to focus on. Okay, You want to focus on this paradigm. What kind of adaptations is this exercise causing to my body? And then what are those adaptations what do they do for me? What's the benefit? Yeah, what's the carryover? That's it. So if I'm training for endurance, what are the adaptations? Well, I get more efficient with calorie burn, which means you burn less calories. I, I build more stamina. That could be good if I'm an athlete or whatever. Uh, what about resistance training? Lifting weights doesn't burn a ton of calories, but what it does is it, through the process of strength and muscle building, it actually speeds up the metabolism. So EPOC, although it is splitting hairs, like Adam said, doesn't burn that many extra calories. It's built on a false paradigm. So forget your calorie burn during your workout. That is not important at all. Look at what adaptations your exercise. Well, even forget is causing. the effort because that—that's what it stands for, right? Right. It's the—it's post-workout that they—they they try and and uh, tout is that oh, right. okay you burn you, more calories. Yeah, yeah. If your body, you know, would burn on and let's just say for hypothetical reasons, it, it was two thousand calories a day. When you do hit training, it burns twenty three hundred calories yeah. in addition to what you burn. And that one, <clears throat> they're inflated numbers and they're and they're false big time. And not to mention too, and we talk about this on the show all the time that no matter what modality of training that you are doing, the body adapts to that. Right. And so any of the- It's the, novel. It's a novel stimulus right. that your body is responding to right away. And yes, there's probably that benefit that you see with an extra amount of calorie burns, but that's a limited window. So your body's going to get very adapted to that and then start you know, slowing down the metabolism as a result. Yeah. So here's the, here's the paradigm you want with exercise. Uh, does this improve my health? Is it improve my fitness? Those are important. And also, is this going to get my body to change in a way that's going to cause my metabolism to speed up so that I burn more calories all the time, not requiring an hour of intense exercise? And the, but the form of exercise that does that is traditional resistance training. So if your goal is fat loss or weight loss or maintain a lean body like most people, um, then focus on the adaptation. Don't focus on the calorie burn during or even after the exercise. Next question is from Lorraine Fighting Fit. Since listening to you guys, I'm trying to cut down on cardio. I always do resistance training anyway, but how much cardio is enough for healthy heart, lungs, etc.? I don't want my cardio to affect my resistance training, but I want to do enough to keep healthy. All right, there's a lot to unpack with this with this particular question. So number one, uh, cardiovascular activity done appropriately is good for you. It's good for your health. So I don't want to give away the message that it's a waste of time or whatever. There's there's nothing wrong with it. It's good for you. Now the question is about hearts and lungs and you know the, the benefits there. The truth is studies actually show this. Resistance training is just as beneficial for the heart as cardiovascular activity. Where cardio is superior to resistance training is in building stamina and endurance. If you want stamina and endurance, more stamina and endurance than you'll get through resistance training, you then you can add cardiovascular training. Now that being said. For most people, you'll get plenty of car of endurance and stamina through resistance training, especially if you cut your, your rest periods short and you do supersets. But if you're somebody that wants more athlete levels of stamina and endurance, then go ahead and do the cardio. What's too much? Well, this is a very independent. This is very, very dependent on the individual. Uh, you know, What's too much for one person is enough for another, just like resistance training. So for most people, if your goal is just overall health, I would say, you know, 30 minutes a day of some kind of cardio is probably great. It's probably going to benefit your health. Well, here, here's the thing. It, training for health is one thing. Training for fat loss is another thing. And I think this is where this message uh, gets mixed up with us, like, you know, that people think that we're anti-cardio. Listen, if you are in a, a healthy weight and you're ha happy where you are, body fat percentage, you don't feel you need to lose any more body fat, do as much cardio as you want. 
I mean, if you if you can get up every day and you enjoy going for a run every morning, by all means, there's that's very healthy and it'd be great. The, what we speak to, because the, like the number one thing that everybody wants to do is to lose body fat. It's a losing battle to go after it through cardio. Right. That is the message. So if you're if you're at where you want to be and you've done it through resistance training and dieting and you got to the body type or size or body fat percentage that you want, do as much cardio as you like. I mean, if you en- if you enjoy doing it, do it every day. So long as it's appropriate, right? You don't overtrain or overdo it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I mean, why would you though? If you're just doing it for health purposes, do how much you enjoy. Right, right. You know right, what I'm right. saying? If you're doing if you're doing it for health purposes, you know, and you like to go for a half hour run or an hour run every day, then go for well, it. I, I like to just pr- you know promote that there's other options out there, and I think that uh, you know people like will hear that, so they'll just think to get on a treadmill and just walk or run and do the same repetitive thing over and over and over again. When you know it's actually going to be more beneficial beneficial for your body to move in a lot of different ways and to be more active overall. Uh, there's so many other uh, joints in your body that need to to be expressed and need to be moved. So that way we avoid pain in, and we avoid these arthritis and things that, that you know, happen as a result of this repetitive stress. We just lock ourselves in these positions. So that's why, you know, I just want to, you know, promote a little bit different message around cardio that, you know, there's there's other ways to to, to get the same result, but you just have to be more active uh, throughout. Yes. And, and I'm so glad you said that. The best form of cardio for most people is walking. And here's why. It's not because walking is superior for stamina or endurance or anything like that. It's because walking is the one skill that most people still possess, right? Most people still walk, so you can go for a walk and you're not gonna have absolutely terrible biomechanics and whatever. Most people, this is the truth now, most people in modern societies don't have the skill of running, sorry. Now, we evolved to run, humans actually evolved to be amazing runners, but that does not mean that you can run well. Uh, if, if you stop running at any point in your life, if you haven't run every day forever, um, like most people, you're in your 20s or 30s and you're like, well, the last time I ran consistently was when I was you know, 10, just lacing up your jogging shoes, going for a run, it's misleading. You think it's easy. Oh, you just go for a run. It's not a big deal. Running is very technical. It's a very technical movement. And if you haven't done it in a long time, you don't run properly, especially if you run to fatigue. Now you're going to go outside and run till you're tired. You're going to run terribly. And this is why, by the way, studies will show this, the number one form of exercise that causes uh, chronic pain and injury is running. It's exactly what Justin was saying. That repetitive motion over and over again in which you don't do it well. So I'm so glad you brought that up. So walking is the best form of cardio for most people. And then mm-hmm. if you want to do more intense forms, treat it like a skill. Don't treat it like a workout. Next question is from RC Legs. Is working out barefoot a good idea? Is there any preparation that needs to be done before doing so? Oh, definitely. Yeah, working out barefoot is a great idea. However... If you never are barefoot and you never work out barefoot, just taking your shoes off and going and doing it barefoot, you're probably going to cause problems because Mm -hmm. you've adapted to your shoes, you've developed biomechanics based on your shoes, and going out and loading yourself with your bare feet, your feet are probably weak, they don't move well, they're probably not very stable, and then you'll cause some problems. So you want to slowly ease yourself into barefoot training. So what it looks like is you drop the load way down. Maybe do half your workout barefoot or some exercises barefoot. Maybe get minimus type shoes. So just yeah. like reduce the sole or like, you know, get something that's a little more flat and flexible. Uh, yeah, there's, you got to look at it in incremental uh, ways to, to address this, to, to really bring yourself down to that uh, place where you feel like you're stabilized properly. So even just the very first step of taking your shoes off when you get home and walking around the house barefoot uh, more consistently before you start mm-hmm. loading them with weight would be a good start. That, and that's how I started. So we, we, I mean, we talked a lot about barefoot training early on in the podcast, um, and I really had never, I had never done it, never prioritized it, and I really didn't see the the importance of it until we had met uh, Doctor Brink. We hung out, and is I want to see what his toes are doing. You can see his left toe is worse than his right toe. He he's going to pronate a little bit more on his left side versus his right side. So that means his foot's flattening. His foot is flattening, correct? Okay. So yeah, so he's going to create a little internal rotation of this entire left leg a little bit more on his right side. So this may affect him when he's wanting to run if he was to run or just basic walking, squatting, you know, any motion that's going to create movement through the hip is now going to cause some of those issues. Makes perfect sense. It all starts from the ground up. I saw that a lot of my dysfunction was stemming from my weak ass feet and poor ankle mobility. <laughs> weak ass feet. Yeah, that's a, I had weak <laughs> ass feet weak and ass I had poor, yeah, poor ankle mobility. <laughs> 
And so that completely, I mean, it, sh- it shattered my paradigm. And then from that moment on, I decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to strengthen my feet. I'm going to work on my ankle mobility. And what that looked like was not me right away going barefoot and then doing my regular workout all barefoot. It started with me just walking outside every day for 10. So I walked Mozzie and well, Bentley back then twice a day. And I would just take, I would do it barefoot now. I never used to do that before. And so I'd just start by a 10 minute walk twice a day, walking barefoot. And then I started working on the ankle mobility. Cause here's the thing too, you got to keep in mind probably one of the more limiting factors with working out barefoot is squatting, right? So doing anything where you have to drop down into a squat, most people have limited ankle mobility and the, the, the heel rise helps us all out. So, it, and depending on how thick a shoes that you wear, when you squat down it, it and you are barefoot, mm-hmm. you, you got to have really good ankle mobility in order for you to get all the way down into a full squat. Otherwise you're going to see a, a deviation. Most likely you'll start to see the feet start to collapse, Mm -hmm. collapse inward. So if you notice that, then don't just work out through that. You need to address uh, the issue, which is the the, the lack of ankle mobility and then the strengthening of the feet. So uh, the other thing I'd start to do is, you know, waking up, there's like what, 7,000 nerves that that, that end up in our meet in our feet. And so before I'd start even going on walks or training them, I'd roll on a, on a lacrosse ball and I'd, I'd put the lacrosse ball in the center and I'd try and articulate my toes and kind of wake up all those muscles that are in your feet before you go in and like lift heavy weight on them. So progress slowly and make it a habit every single day. And then you can start to progress it into your work. Yeah, we really don't, we really need to understand that uh, so much of what we do is based off of our body's ability to do those things. And if you, if you don't ever do it, you don't have the ability and you need to respect that. You know, there was that book that came out, I don't know how long ago, it was 15 years ago. And it was like this barefoot running book. And it like, it Mm -hmm. took the running world by storm, right? This guy went and studied these cultures that ran all the time. So there was like this- Born to run? I think that might've been it, right? And he watched them run and all these cultures, he was in Ethiopia and he was in different parts of the world and he's watching them run and they're running up until they're in their 70s. Mm -hmm. But they run all the time since they're kids and they're all barefoot. And he, he filmed- how the foot struck the ground and moved. And you realize that when these people ran, because they ran barefoot, they struck the ground four foot first and then mm-hmm. heel. So like mm-hmm. the ankle and the foot is this big shock absorber. When we run with big padded heel, you know, running shoes, we, we go heel first. So yeah. we lose the shock absorbing effect of the foot and the ankle. So he wrote this big thing and said, oh my God, running barefoot's the way to go. It's the way we were supposed to run. So a bunch of people are like beautiful, threw their shoes away, went running barefoot, ended up with a lot of injuries <laughs> hurt, yeah. and problems because they never run that way. So right, right. you got to respect it and take your time. But once you get there, then it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Next question is from Junin87. I have days where I just straight up don't get hungry, even if I worked out. Should I force feed myself to get my proper caloric or macro intake? Or just listen to my body and stomach and not eat as much. This reminds me, we just had a question about like, and we remember we talked about the whole clock thing and I was bringing up how time is like this made up thing that we all made up. All oh, right. This is a, this is an example of how this. Where you got philosophical. <laughs> did, did we really? I mean, I, 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 the point time is a construct. Time doesn't work. Yeah. It's well, not real. Well, it isn't, right? It's something that we, we have made up, it's right? It's illusion. It, it's something that we have made up. We've created these 24 hour days, seven days a week, but the truth is, like your your body doesn't know different. And if you're and if you're not hungry, it's not a big deal if you don't eat. Uh, I bet you the next day you're going to be a lot more hungry than you were before. Yeah. So, now, now that being said, if you find that this is a problem and your health is suffering as a result, you're underweight, nutrient yeah, intake point. is low. Uh, look at your health. Uh, poor appetite. Um, in, in the way I'm talking about it, not a normal appetite where sometimes you eat more, sometimes you eat less, but rather a, a poor appetite that's actually affecting your health, like I said, with your nutrient intake and your underweight and all that stuff, um, it, there's an underlying cause. Uh, poor appetite is a very strong signal that something is not right. It could be a hormone imbalance. It could be gut health issues. It could be mental or psychological. Oftentimes, people are uh, there's a tremendous amount of stress or anxiety that they might not even be aware of, or maybe you are, and that'll strongly affect your appetite. So you could also be overtraining. You know, um, One of the signs of overtraining is actually loss of appetite. You work out too much, you'll find that your appetite... In fact, when I would train clients, there were three signs I would look for mm. that would tell me that we were on the right track. One was easy. Uh, are you getting stronger? If you're getting stronger, that's phenomenal. The other one, if your appetite's going up, so when my, my clients would tell me, 
oh man, I'm like hungrier. I feel like I'm hungrier. Like that's a good sign. And then the third one was libido. Their libido would go up. And I knew if those three, those three, three things hit, we were doing great. So poor appetite can be a sign that there's some underlying issue, in which case I would recommend you go see a functional- Can, uh, but I would say, that wouldn't you agree that this is probably a small, smaller percentage? I think a majority of people- Yeah, this person might be one of those people that's like, I got to pack on muscle. I need to eat this many calories, but I'm yeah. not hungry enough to eat it. Yes. In which case, you're just not listening and, to your and, body. And honestly, that was, and I like talking, speaking to this because I struggled with this for so many years. Being a kid that was mm -hmm. uh, insecure about being skinny, I wanted to be more muscular and put muscle on. I, and I knew what, I figured out what my macro targets were- and if I did not get there or I was at the end of the day and I was missing my macro targets, I was stuffing my face yep. with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah, it was a and, chore just to try and get the calories right. in. Because I thought if I didn't do it, then all that hard work I did the previous weeks to build muscle, it would start falling off yep. my body right away. Yeah. And it, it, your, your metabolism doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It does not want to burn up and use muscle tissue. So you do not have to worry about if you have a day or two where you miss macro targets that you're going to lose your gains or lose muscle and more than likely that appetite will come back up within 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, if you don't have a roaring appetite, I would look into your training protocol and like really like assess whether or not, you know, that's, you know, promoting something that's that's going to get you in a healthy place where your metabolism should want to, you know, rev up a bit. Yeah, boy, is this really depend on who you're talking to, doesn't it? I know. It? It's oh, like, yeah. like Adam you're speculating. If what Adam's talking about is totally different and I 100% agree. If you're that guy or girl and then I'd say, just listen to your body. You're, you're, I think you're overdoing it. You're overthinking it. If you're if you have underlying health issues and you really do have a poor appetite, then it's a totally different conversation. So That's it really true. does depend on on who you are. Look, uh, go over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. If you love our content on the podcast, you'll love our written content. Lots of free information. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us all on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Literally, this is no joke. I know there's a lot of books written on the obesity epidemic and how to solve it, and they're like, oh, all these complicated. Literally, this is it right here. If people just reduce their heavily processed food intake down to about 10% of their diet, so 10% of your diet or less, heavily processed food, that's it. Eat like you want to, enjoy your food.